Thanks to Babbel, a language learning app, for supporting this SciShow video. As a SciShow viewer, you can use our link to grow your language skills with Babbel for up to 60% off with a 20-day money-back guarantee. If you have a pet or spend any time around animals at all, you've probably watched them sleep and wondered what they're dreaming about. Maybe your cat is dreaming that they're chasing a rat. Maybe your rat's dreaming about how to get from a tasty pile of food back to their home. But we can do better than just guess. Scientists have studied the brains and behavior of all kinds of animals from birds to octopuses to learn about their dreams. And believe it or not, we can often identify exactly what they're dreaming about. When it comes to dreams, we have the most data about humans because people can actually tell scientists about our thoughts after we've slept. But rodents are a close second. After all, a huge amount of what we know about the brain comes from rats and mice. And we're not all that different from them when it comes to dreams. For both humans and rodents, one of the main uses of dreaming seems to be replaying the day and making sure you hold onto its valuable memories. The difference is that rats do it in fast forward. Their day runs through their mind at seven times the original speed while they sleep. We know this because of science. Researchers at the University of Arizona trained rats to run along a path during their waking hours. While this was happening, they recorded the output from the rat's neurons in the part of the brain that helps with decision-making, known as the prefrontal cortex. They looked for patterns in which cells were active at what moment, but not just while the rats were running around. They also looked for those patterns while they slept. As you might expect, the patterns weren't there in pre-training slumber. They first showed up during training, but similar patterns showed up again afterwards during naps. So once they learned the path they were supposed to walk along, they replayed it in their mind while they were sleeping. But that pattern played on easy mode while the rats were walking the path and ramped up to advanced mode when they slept. By the time they went to sleep, their prefrontal cortex cells were firing around seven times faster than they had during the awake trial run. While the speed at which rodents do this is unusual, many other animals also replay the things they learn throughout the day but they dream about totally different stuff. In the life of a male zebra finch, it's really important to learn how to sing from your dad so that you can grow up and find your own mate to have cute baby birds with. And these aren't the simple little chickadee-dee-dee songs that some birds sing. They're complex songs with a variety of syllables that combine to form a special tune unique to that bird. The ladies love a complicated song because a male who can sing really complex tunes is probably fit, which means that instead of being up in the the gym, these birds work on their fitness by practicing ornate melodies, even in their sleep. But once again, we're not just guessing that they practice their songs in their dreams. We have the data. There's a part of the brain called the robustus archistriatalis that responds to songs in a specific enough way that trained researchers can read its output like a page of music notes. And at the University of Chicago, they did just that. They recorded the activity of individual brain cells in the robustus archistriatalis while birds sang and while they slept, and they saw the same patterns. But in contrast, to rat dreams, the timing of these sleepy bird songs was the same as the awake song. You just can't listen to a masterpiece like that on seven times speed. So songbirds dream of sweet lullabies, but other animals are contending with literal nightmares. Cephalopod has gotta be one of our best words. It's just really fun to say. And the animals included in this category are just as goofy as the word. We're talking cuttlefish and octopuses. But as goofy and fun as cephalopods may be, their dreams get intense. The way they sleep suggests that they can relate to our experience of tossing and turning from a bad dream. See, when we do that, it's because our bodies are physically responding to a threat in our dreams. And cephalopods do the same thing, even though we went our separate ways on the evolutionary tree more than 500 million years ago. They have a similar kind of REM sleep to us, where they move their eyes and twitch. But they take it to the next level because they change colors in their sleep, too. When they're awake, they use this color-changing ability to hide from threats and to communicate with others. But when they're asleep, they sometimes change colors in a way that's still coordinated, but not relevant to their surroundings. So researchers at the University of Pennsylvania and Millersville University think it's a response to what's going on in their head, kind of like our physical responses to dreams. And if they're responding to threats in their sleep, like a moray eel coming over to eat them, that sounds like a nightmare to me. I mean, have you seen those things? They're terrifying. Now, I know the chances of you seeing a dreaming octopus are much lower than, say, a dreaming cat. So let's get into the science of Mr. Whiskers' dreams. Cats, like cephalopods and us, get a little twitchy while they sleep. Or if they're like my cat, Huckleberry, they, they look like they're riding a bike. 
He's so cute. So researchers at the University of Chicago wanted to figure out what makes them tick. These scientists measured brain waves in sleeping cats using cat-sized EEGs, and they found that the sleeping cat brain works a lot like awake cat brains. Sure, we can't ask the cats about what they were dreaming about, as much as I would like to, but their brain activity also looked a lot like ours does when we're dreaming, so we have a pretty good idea. And the cats showed the same twitchy legs and rapid eye movements that we do while we're dreaming. So far, the most studied hypothesis for those eye movements is that they're looking at whatever they'd be directing their attention to in a dream. It's called the scanning hypothesis, because in their dreams, the cats are scanning their environments for things like danger or a rodent treat. In fact, one study found that the eyes frequently moved in coordination with their heads during REM sleep, so they're orienting more of their bodies than just their eyes while they sleep. And soon after those eye and head movements, the cats would burst into action to jump and attack. Ultimately, their bodies and brains were sending signals like they're on high alert, but just like the cephalopods, it wasn't in response to anything going on around them. So the scientists figured that's probably what a dreaming cat looks like, and that means that at least some of the time, they might have been dreaming about whatever puts cats on high alert, like chasing a squirrel. But until someone conducts a study like they did with rats and compares cat brains while they're chasing squirrels and while they're sleeping, we won't know for sure. Obviously, humans, rodents, birds, cephalopods, and cats live in wildly different environments with very different stresses. So it's no surprise that there's some variation in our dreams. But the biggest difference seems to be what's on our minds when we're awake. Usually, we're dreaming about that. When it comes to replaying our days and expressing our fears, other animals seem to have dreams that are a lot like ours. I wonder if they have the one where they show up to class in their underwear. On the topic of relatable dreams, do you ever have the one where for some reason you and everyone around you are communicating in a language you don't actually speak? Like it's me and my mom in her kitchen in Florida, but we're talking to each other in French and neither of us actually knows French. Maybe that dream is telling you it's time to learn French, or maybe you saw a billboard written in French earlier that day. Either way, if you want to understand what that billboard says, Babbel can help. Babbel is the number one language learning app in the world with 14 different languages at your fingertips. Now, we all want to know more languages, but it takes a lot of time, so Babbel forms their lessons to be just 10 minutes at a time, giving more of us the chance to pick it up little by little every day. After three weeks, you can start speaking French with your mom in her kitchen, but for real this time. And conveniently, the 20 days that it takes to start speaking a new language is the window for Babbel's money-back guarantee, so you won't lose anything for trying. And as a SciShow viewer, you can get up to 60% off when you sign up using the link in the description down below. Choose from different subscriptions, including a lifetime option that comes with two free live classes. Thanks to Babbel for supporting this SciShow video.